All right, and joining us for more on this is Captain Gurcharan Arora, Chief of Flight Operations at SpiceJet. Thank you, sir, for your time, uh, for joining us. So, uh, you know, this is every passenger's worst nightmare. We've gotten so used to flying, but, I mean, uh, you only hear of these uh, such incidents and planes returning uh, in, in the movies. It has now been a few hours, so you have probably investigated. You have more details about exactly what happened. Can we now confirm that it was a bird hit? Yes, we can. All right. And are bird hits uh, uh, a regular feature? I mean, obviously, you cannot uh, factor that in because this is a natural uh, phenomena. Uh, yes, they are a regular feature. But let me please uh, fill up that statement with a few details. Usually, the bird hits occur on the airframe. Mm -hmm. So there's a small thud. There is no damage to the engine. You know that passenger aeroplanes today are made to withstand a lot of beating. They're very rugged. They're very reliable. The airframe as well as the engine. So you normally would not even get to know about it. In mm. terms of frequency, I would not hazard a number, but every month you would have a few perverteds for sure on the various aeroplanes. So why was today different? Today was different because the birdhead was directly into the engine. Three fan blades have got damaged. I can confirm that. And it resulted in uh, smoke and flames. There were no indications in the cockpit, which is a testimony to how rugged the engines are. They were running absolutely smoothly. So the only indications were what was seen by people outside on the ground in the ATC. So and this was it, then, can we say, like a freak uh, incident if the bird, it happened to just, you know, hit the engine as opposed to the frame of the plane? Uh, we don't call it a freak incident because every year we know for a fact that there are a few occasions like this, incidents like this all over the world. And after this happened, uh, what transpired? And are you, as the chief of flight operations, satisfied with the way uh, your crew, your staff reacted? Right. So let me just quickly run you through it. So they started the takeoff roll, normal takeoff. They heard a little thud from the left hand side. The little thud means normally suspicion. Yes, there's been a bird hit, but there were no cockpit indications. Shortly after that, they got a call from the ATC saying we can see smoke and flames from your left side, which means engine number one. Hmm. Now we have a standard operating procedure in such event. You've heard a thud and somebody has corroborated that they can see something wrong with an engine, in this case, smoke and flames. So you have a checklist. You announce a pan pan, which is like uh, telling the world there is something not OK with me, hmm. not something very serious, but something is not OK with me. And I'll get back to you in a little while after I deal with it. And then you run through a couple of checklists and these checklists tell you exactly what to do. And step by step, you shut down the suspect engine and then you land ASAP, which is as soon as practical at the nearest suitable airport, which in this case was Patna. So that's exactly what the pilots have done. All right. So you're saying they exactly followed the standard operating procedure uh, in this case. Yes. All right. Um, what I, I'm just trying to think as a, as a passenger, is there anything that a passenger needs to be doing while they're in the plane? Because we can see videos being shot, I think, possibly from a, a, a window too, that can also lead to panic. Uh, what for anyone who's watching, we're all regularly taking flights now. What is the standard operating procedure for passengers on a plane? Excellent question again. So what I would say as a pilot, uh, Use this case as an example of, firstly, how rugged and reliable our present-day passenger aeroplanes are, number one, and how solid is the training imparted to the pilots that they very calmly handle situations like this, non-normal situations like this. So my message to the passengers should be, one, give kudos to the training given to the pilots, to their abilities, and uh, to the calm headedness with which they deal with non-normal conditions. That's what they train for. And this is what they've executed. So it's a live example and take cognizance of the fact that the aeroplanes are very rugged, very reliable. So it's a very good combination. So you're in safe hands. Captain Arora, of course, uh, that we have more than one engine on a plane for this reason that in case something happens. But uh, in this case, we are, uh, you know, it's we're all extremely fortunate that uh, this bird hit or this incident took place right at, I mean, right at takeoff. I'm not sure if bird hits take place during mid flights because of course planes are much higher off. So the obvious uh, uh, decision, I mean, there was a no brainer, I'm guessing that you return, return back. Would it have been different if it were at a, at a different point of time? 
No, it wouldn't. And I'd like to explain. Uh, regulations demand and engines are built so that even after you've lost an engine, you can safely fly for maybe even up to three hours on a single engine. Oh, wow. But every regulator mandates that you land within 60 minutes. So the way we plan our flights, in the worst case scenario, when you're furthest away from an airport, even then you have a suitable airport within 60 minutes away from you. So in case something like this happens, you head for the nearest suitable airport and you land. So the priority the is engine, to of land course, ASAP. Yes. Captain Aurora, thank you for joining us. It's, of course, crucial anytime incidents like this happen that we have uh, people like you step up to speak with and uh, clarify any doubts or fears uh, that people may have after incidents such as this. So we're grateful for your time. Thank you so much.